So his, poof, he is pushing his chest all the way to the front. You really want to generate the movement with your wrist. So why is he jumping? Well, in this case, there are two ways to go. One is Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Paddle Analysis. And today we have German Schaefer here. Welcome, German. Thank you, nice to be back again. And we're going to look on the kick smash or the flat smash from Bea Gonzalez, from Cuello, from Paquito, Teo, and maybe some other players. I have a little surprise for the end. Oh, uh, oh. Can you guess which will be the last smash? And comment now, not on the end, after you've seen it. That's not fair. Vamos. Vamos. So first we're gonna have a look on uh, Coelho, his kick smash. And um, he has an incredible kick smash. Uh, very different from the other ones that we're going to analyze, but you will see that later on, of course, if you keep watching the video. Don't forget to like as well and follow German here on Instagram, you see here. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> so now he's going to play a very good kick smash. We freeze the section here because what I like a lot, German, is this arch. Why, well, why is this arch so important in the kick smash? Well, first thing he does is as he bends his knees a little bit more than usual and he arcs. What he's looking for yeah. is, is to generate a motion up so he can really spin the ball a lot. Yeah. Uh, and differently from the smash, from the flat smash, he doesn't really want to push the ball down. He actually wants to push the ball up. Yeah. But what he wants is a really, really high speed rotation on, on the ball. So he when the ball hits the glass, yeah. it will go much higher. Yeah, and you can see that he lost the point, but that's because he smashed the ball in the center. That was not uh, the best option in the world. Well, I think the, the, the issue was not that really. I think what happened is oh. that uh, his timing wasn't perfect. So the ball stayed a little bit close to him and, and, and not enough to, the, to his right. So he couldn't really move his arm as fast and as high as he would like to. He had to. He couldn't make the whole movement uh, the way he would like to do it. But it's quite difficult to, sm to, to smash these high lobs, in my opinion. It is. It yeah, is. And that's why the, the, the difficulty of this shot, I say, is, is, the, is the hardest one of all the shots. And this is outdoor in Qatar, I think, in the World Cup. Yeah. That's probably one the reason why he didn't have the perfect timing, because maybe the ball has moved a little bit, yeah. and that's just enough. Yeah, and uh, then it might be easy to play the flat smash. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So if you look at the footwork, what I find interesting is that he, he's so low. This, this knee flexion is lower than the other guys. Yeah. And Bea that we're going to, to check is, is uh, much different. Uh, right hand incredibly high up in the air, which could be uh, a good reference. to. to yeah, to well, that's telling you that the ball is also really high. So he's really following the ball with his hand yeah. and also placing his hand more or less in the place he would like to to have the ball. It's, it's, it's basically a reference to improve your timing, to, yeah. to know where the ball is and, and to know when is the right moment to jump up. You have to understand that in this shot you have to synchronize so many movements at the same time yeah. that one of those movements in the wrong moment and the shot is not the same. No. If you see Coelho is having a very good kick smash, doesn't mean you, you should do the kick smash. Uh, maybe it's better to start with the flat smash. Absolutely. We're okay. going to see later when we see uh, some other smashes yeah. that they are a little bit more forgiven. Yeah. Let's say, call it that way. Uh, now I just want to have a look on the arch. Yeah. So his, poof, he is pushing his chest all the way to the front. What he wants is his racket to go all around the ball. Yeah. Like rapid. Yeah. To generate the more spin he can possibly have. Yeah. So if the ball is a clock and he's left-handed. He will hit it at five. Yes. Five o'clock to like uh, eleven, something. Something like that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because to kick he it wants out. To push it up uh, and left in this case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it also depends on what you want. If you want to kick it out or if you want to kick it up and coming back. Yeah. If he's going to kick out, he has to go more to the left. If not, he's going to round it and bring it down a little bit down again. Yeah. What can we say about the, the preparation here? Because then the, the preparation is 
is like this. This is different from the flat smash, right? Uh, well, what changes is that you in, in, in this shot, you want your elbow quite low, so you can really throw it up. Yeah. And what is it similar to the flat is that you want the inner face of the racket to look at your back head. Yeah. You know, you don't want it open. You really no. want it closed because you really want to generate the movement with your wrist as well. So this is not just about the body, it's about the, the wrist. We're going to see later that some players use more the body and some other players use more the wrist as well. Yeah, so that's a personal preference. It's not right and wrong. Well, for me, this never right and wrong. Some things need to be there. Yeah. But then, of course, it's, it's personal. This, this angle is insane. It's right foot. But his right foot is going up, but it's not something that you're really uh, thinking about doing it. It just happens. Your body is compensating you. Because since you arch so much... Yeah, this is you... insane. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at how, his, how well, high it is. Higher than his hip. First of all, you need to have his flexibility. Yeah. <laughs> to put it that high. That is a way to, to balance your body back. Yeah. Because you've been back a lot, and as you come up... Yeah, he's like here. Yeah. Look at the angle. Yeah, yeah, no, it's crazy. So he's going from there to, to there, there. Yeah. And otherwise it would not have been kick. Uh, no, but also he would probably fell in the floor. Yeah, so he needs a counterweight. So his left foot here is, is probably a counterweight, otherwise yes, he falls down. exactly. Okay. But what I'm trying to say is that it's a natural thing that the body does. To keep the balance. To keep the balance. It's not something that we should think about it and try to do it on purpose mm. because it could come up in the wrong moment and yeah. that would not help, it would be more I like to do. The, I would help. like to do this a lot, but my leg is never coming up that so high. So say that, but you're not, you're not going to go that high. No, no, never. <laughs> neither neither no, do I. No. <laughs> I will break my leg. So now we're going to move to Paquito, his smash. He can smash very, very well and he does it way different than Coelho, which makes it very interesting. Watch this clip and tell us in the comments below, is this legal, yes or not? And we will say the answer in the next video. What we can see here is he arched a little bit. Yeah. The angle of the footage is, doesn't show so, but he arched a little bit, but definitely not as much uh, well. as Coelho. No. No. His racket is more open, and look at the position of his wrist. He's bending his wrist a lot. You're going to see his wrist moving like crazy fast. So fast that he loses the racket from the grip. So basically, what they have in common is a very similar contact point. Yeah. Left hand, same place. Yeah. I mean, left hand Paquito, yeah. right hand uh, Coelho. Uh, but the main difference is the way they used to generate the spin. Yeah. Coelho uses his wrist, but he uses a lot more his body, his back, to, to generate. And Paquito uses his body a little bit, but a lot more his wrist. He's literally letting the racket go. Absolutely. So after he's hitting the shot, Paquito, he just let it go. It's insane. It's so what, what we can learn from here is that there's always different ways to do things. And yeah. all of them are right as long as it works. And what would be easier to use, the body or the wrist motion? Do you recommend somebody at uh, advanced level to use the wrist a lot? In my opinion, uh, it's different in every player. Yeah. So maybe for you, backhand shot is easier. And for me, forehand shot is easier. Yeah. This is not different. No. Now, what I can tell you is that maybe it's easier not to use the body so much at the beginning to get the timing to be in good balance until you get the motion and then more and more and more you can start using your body. So the more you use your body, the more yes, muscles you use, the faster it becomes, the uh, harder it is to time. Yeah, because in the minute you're arching so much, it's so difficult to control your balance, to control many things. Yeah. So I think that should be the more towards the end and yeah. first you need to start hitting the ball even maybe not so much in the left. Maybe a little bit more on top of your head, a little bit back, and start with some spin, some spin, let the wrist go, let the wrist go. And then you can say, okay, now I lay the ball here. As the ball is more on the left, you will have to arch. What I just want to have a look on, on Paquito Smash before we move to the other one. What I normally say as a coach, but I, I, I'm not sure what you do, but um, what I like them to do is to have the motion, uh, like a, a frozen preparation a little bit. Absolutely. But he seems to move his racket all the time. His racket never stops. Once again, different players, yeah. different ways. He uses one swing, let's say. Yeah. It's easier if you have two swings because 
you prepare and whenever you need it yeah you go you go so to do it as Paquito does it you have to have an amazing sense of, of timing. distance and timing yeah because it's a very long swing yeah and my timing is not the best so for me uh, uh, like a fixed frozen mm -hmm. swing makes but, more sense yeah absolutely I recommend to do it like like two different things. One is the yep. back swing and then the follow through. But if somebody does it and it works, perfect, no problems. Yeah. You know, this this is for me always what I always say to people is just judge. Yep. Smash twenty times. Yeah. If you are hitting eighty percent, keep it. If you're between seven and eighty, mm, if you're below seventy, something needs to change. Yeah. And what do you think about the how tight you need to hold the racket because Paquito is clearly just letting it go, like the rack is literally off his hand. Do you need to uh, play very fast when you play no. kick? No, I mean, when you play the kick, you have to understand that you need to be able to move your wrist. A lot. A lot. If I hold the rocket softly, I can move it. Yeah. Hmm? If I hold it hard, I lose mobility. Yeah. What happens is if I lose the grip too much, the ball might move my racket so it should be medium really yeah so hard enough so i can push the ball yeah but not too hard because then i cannot really accelerate my wrist yeah makes sense okay yeah another thing is the grip people that uses the wrist a lot normally have a small grip mm. To use the wrist more. Yeah, because it's more wrist. The thicker the grip, the more locked is the wrist. Makes sense, mm -hmm. makes sense. And if this all sounds too complicated to you, maybe you should move to a flat smash. Bea Gonzalez can play with kick, but also a flat. And now she's showing a flat smash, and this is something that you might be able to do if you find the kick smash something that is not your favorite shot. So this preparation is different, no arch. Whatsoever. No, she, she still uses her legs to, to yeah. generate power. We have to remember for this shot, we need to generate more power mm, because yeah. we don't have the spin that will make the ball go up. You we need to we play really need a hard contact okay. with the ball. So she's using her legs. We can still see her left hand up. Mm. That's the but same. It, That's similar. Mm, similar, but it's more to the right. Correct. That's yeah. giving you, us an idea of, of what kind of shot she's going to play. Yeah. If she was kicking the ball, her hand would probably be more to the left, yeah. together with her head. Another difference is the height on the elbow. You see the, the much right higher. It's much higher. It's the I speak on the 90-90 yeah, a lot of times. because time. she really wants to contact the ball there, and because she also really needs to move her forearm yeah. very fast, and she needs to pronate. Yeah. So from here, it would be a lot more uncomfortable to pronate. Yeah, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. What I find uh, different <clears throat> as well is that she has the right foot very far, in my opinion, to the, to the middle line. So her right foot is closer to the middle line than her left foot. This would be different if it was kick. Uh, yeah, well, in this case also, I think, even for a flat smash, what it looks like is like he church, she changed her mind in the last minute. And once again, the plane outdoor, the ball might have moved and might force her to compensate smash. I, I, the smash in a different way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, also the elbow is higher and the face of the racket is not really behind her head, as we saw before. It's quite high. Yes. The, the position of the racket is the same. The, the, face of the, the inner face is looking down, yeah. but it's not so much uh, behind her. As she's hitting now, you can clearly see the difference. It's not really a big arch. It looks like she's already started to pronate her yeah. arm. See the face of the racket, if it was a kick, this part of the racket will be looking up. Yeah. She's already on the way out. Hmm? Yeah, and, and her body is completely open. So she's, she's starting mm -hmm. to rotate the, yeah, the shoulders yeah, yeah, through yeah. the ball to generate mm -hmm. that extra speed that you want to have when you're flat. She kind of remains there. I am a fan of this. Right foot stays behind, in my opinion. Well, yeah, it gives you a lot more control. Yeah, because if that's, your right foot is going there. That's why the other shot is more difficult, because yeah. it's, it's harder to control it look at the contact point it's arm full straight we can actually say before the contact when you kick you hit the ball like here and you fully extend once you touch the ball yeah. you understand what i mean yeah. here you fully extend right when you hit or even sometimes a little bit earlier but also look at the ball position look at the contact point it's more to her right it's as well. a lot more to her right and also look at the face of the racket it's completely straight to the ball. Yeah. 
So the, the, the contact is very difficult. She's hitting the ball like in the center of the back of the ball. Yeah. And the kick smash goes around the ball. Yeah, so okay. for sponsors, it is better if the players play flat. flat. Absolutely. Yeah, because we you can, can clearly see the beautiful star there. Yeah. We're not going to finish the phrase. No. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay us. So then she's accelerating and, yes. the, and, the and the finish. Yeah, she's completely turned. The racket is is going to the left pocket. Yeah. Rather than to the right and remain there. Yeah. And also look at her legs. There's no right leg up in the air to Nothing. compensate the balance because yep. in this case he's her head, sorry, has gone forwards. Into the ball. Yes. Now um, we have like a hybrid kind of smash from Theo. Yes. Which is very interesting because this is like an in-between. So maybe we can recommend everybody to start like the way Bea is smashing now, if you want to smash, like a flat yes. smash. Yeah. And then once you move to that next level and you're uh, winning some points and you're hitting some of your opponents straight into the body, you can go to Theo's his smash. His elbow is quite low. He's actually stepping in to the ball a little bit. Yeah, if you remember when we saw Paquito and when we saw Coelho, both legs were very equal. Yeah, in... towards the fence. Yeah. Not, not really to the opponent. But this one is, so he's actually transferring the weight of his body to the front leg. Yeah. In the other ones, there was no transfer of the weight to the front. It was mainly to the side, this way or this way in the case of the left-handed. You yeah. understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yes. It looks like he's going to hit the ball flat, actually. And his arch is not so big. Right hand is more to the right. Yeah, and he's mm -hmm. around the second post, I think, more or less. Yes, yes. Yeah. Elbow is quite low. This, yes. this angle is quite low. Uh, some people uh, have issues with this to generate power. Like some people asked Sven, I don't have a lot of power on my smash. I would usually say that if the elbow is like too close or too low, it is quite hard to generate that yes. power. Well, yeah. that's why you saw Paquito with quite open. Yeah. He's, he wasn't so close to his body. Yeah. Mm. Here you, you don't have mm. any power. You're not strong here. You see his elbow now is in the level of the shoulder and the face of the racket is more open like Bea's before. Yeah. It's not as close as it was Paquito's or Paello. And his right toe is like in the ground. Yeah. And then he hits it and he goes mm -hmm. sideways, not so much like 90 degrees there, but he's going like a little bit yeah. like 45. Body moves a little bit to the left and the ball comes up a lot and, and his opponent yeah. jump from Holland, by the way, and he cannot touch so it. So basically what he did is that he's hitting the ball flat and hard because he thinks he's close to the net enough to be able to save the net and get height. But just in case he wants some extra height, that's why he's going to use the wrist and the body a little bit yeah. to get like an extra meter height, yeah. you know. Mm? But the contact point, if you see it, is still on the right. Yeah, so this is like the in-between. This is like a yes. hybrid. Yeah, but once again, this is another thing that proves that there's so many different smashes. Yeah. So if you smash the ball in a way and it doesn't look exactly like Oeyo or exactly like this, don't worry. As long as it works and it doesn't hurt. Yeah. You can do uh, it. It's okay. And of course, always, if you have doubts, check with the coach. Yeah. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. with us in the comments. Absolutely. Yeah. Should we get some jumping smashes into it? Ah, you <laughs> ruined my surprise. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yes. Inside the flat smash, uh, we have some players that choose to jump to be able to hit the ball in an even much higher spot, which makes the ball because of the angle come much higher. Okay. Plus, since you're so high up in the air, the gravity force will help you to accelerate the down forwards motion. Yeah. Shingoto has to run for his life. Eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> run <laughs> for it. <laughs> Look how high his knees are. So, why is he jumping? Well, in this case, there are two ways to go. One is to move back so you have the ball very much in front of you but what he's looking for is basically for a much higher contact point the reason why not everybody does it is because it's really really difficult to calculate the timing yeah. you know you have to calculate when the ball is going to be in the right place and you have to jump just at the right time yeah. and he did have a tail does that a lot as well indeed and it has happened a few times that he jumped too soon so he's on the way back and the ball is still on the way up or he jumped too high and the ball stayed too low. So it's complicated. But it's true that when you do it right, it's, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah, because 
you can smash the ball really down with a lot of power and you're gonna have one two more meters high so this is something ball. that you can also use straight so not to get the ball out of the court but to, to smash no, straight no, that's mainly to get it straight really yeah you, you don't really want because to they it. can never touch it to, to kick it out you use the top spin you yeah. use the, the kick this is power and height yeah so basically you just want to bring it back to your side of the court so yeah. uh, also you need a lot of space to be able to run and jump so you so never do this on the right very very rarely yeah maybe in a short ball that you can run forwards yeah but uh, you know if you jumped from the place yeah. you never jump so high yeah and if you look at that he was jumping with one leg really it's the left one that takes you out so first of all you need to have the the timing second you need to have the power in your legs to do that because yeah. also as you're jumping you need to prepare the racket so you you're coordinating you're synchronizing a lot a lot of things so do we recommend this to everybody at home no don't do it at home <laughs> <laughs> for the sake of your partner especially yeah not your paddle partner but your partner at your home <laughs> yeah let's summarize a little bit so what are the things we can learn from the world paddle two players when smashing number one is take it easy start with flat if your normal shot is a kick maybe you come from tennis you like to kick kick yeah do that if, the, it works, if it works it works check the statistics check how many points you're winning because of the smash yeah if if, you, if it's not more than 50 percent <laughs> stop smashing or uh, start maybe or smash from closer to the net yes so we have to get like if is it windy be careful if it's cold mm -hmm. if you're in spain smash if you're in holland mm -hmm. uh, it, yeah. all those things are very very important and remember to try to keep your feet on the ground when you smash at the yeah. beginning yeah it, it makes more sense, you have more balance, more control, and you're going to win all of your matches. And that's it for this video today, so uh, thank you so much for watching. And, and uh, remember, next time we tell you if Paquito Smash was legal or not. Ooh, let us know in the comments below. Hasta luego, ciao, adios.